live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE special presentation of Dell EMC World 2017. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE. This is the first Dell EMC World, formerly EMC World, which this is our eighth consecutive year covering EMC World now, Dell EMC World, and I'm joined on our kickoff of day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage with Keith Townsend, analyst at CTO Advisor, and David Floyer, CTO at Wikibon, breaking down what happened yesterday, what's happening this morning on the keynotes. Guys, welcome to our kickoff of day two of Dell EMC World 2017. Good to be here again. Uh, Keith and David, uh, David, you were in the, all the sessions yesterday, the analyst briefings, work in the hallways, talking to sources, you have meetings one-on-ones, you're really getting the data on, on what is the product story, the bigger picture story and impact. I want to go to you first and get your a summary of what's being announced here, uh, specifically around the Dell EMC World products, what's the positioning, what's stake in the ground they're putting, and what's the impact to customers? So uh, the, the general theme is better together. And uh, that came out very, very strongly all the way through all of the conversations. Uh, we, we, uh, the, the way that they're working together between Dell, between VMware, uh, between uh, uh, the various parts of uh, Dell EMC as well, I thought was exemplary. Uh, and they put together a very strong strategy uh, in, the, in the time that they've, uh, eight months that they've been uh, together. To me, the highlights were the real focus on hyper-converged. Um, they have gone really strongly for this. They've got VX Rail, they've got VS Rack, they've got VX Block, all hyper-converged infrastructure taking out the cost from the end users, from the uh, IT shops, taking that out and replacing it with uh, services, uh, integration of both the hardware, the processes, the network, and the storage, all together with the management framework out of it. So that, to me, was one very big highlight. Hyper-converged. Hyper-converged. The second is they are going very strongly uh, into hybrid cloud. Uh, and they have the mechanism of doing it, which is VMware. And one of the key things that you need, in, in I've written a, a, a number of research pieces around this, is that you need commonality between the cloud and on-premise, and in the future, to a large extent, on, uh, for IoT, on the edge as well. And that commonality uh, it is provided here with VMware, uh, and is, uh, is provided with the file systems that they had, so vSAN, for example, or uh, Scale.io, give that commonality between the cloud and the uh, on-premise. This is, uh, they can truly deliver hybrid cloud. If you look at AWS, you've got their cloud is, is one cloud, just AWS, and almost, they don't have anything they can push out to the edge. Uh, you say VMware's way. got the glue. Yes, the glue which holds it together, VMware glue. And from a Dell perspective, they can choose between Azure or VMware. They can also go with the Azure stack and then have hardware with the Azure stack and the Azure cloud. So fitting into two parts of hybrid cloud. So that was the second area. Great, and for the folks watching, you can check out David Floyer's research on wikibon.com. There's some free content there, but also subscription required. Go to youtube.com slash siliconangles to get all the videos from this session. And I want to just take a minute to thank our sponsors, Dell EMC, Cisco, Dados, Toshiba, Nutanix, Druva, Virtustream, and VMware. Without their support, the Cube coverage would not be possible, all this great content. Thank you very much to the sponsors, and, and give, them a, give them a shout out on Twitter. Um, bring two cubes here at Dell EMC World. Thanks to the sponsors. Keith, I want to go to you and get the reaction from you on day one and now the keynote from Pat Gelsing and also commentary and reaction from David Floyer's comments around you know, the keys that they're putting out there. Impact to customers, because at the end of the day, we heard Michael Dell yesterday say, we want to be your preferred supplier. Um, you know, they want to reduce the number of suppliers, not all suppliers, but they got the end-to-end -end story, so there's a land grab going on for sure, no doubt about it. How real is that trust equation with Dell EMC, obviously, you know it's their event. They, you know, they're peacocking big time here. But I get that. How real is it from your perspective? So let's talk about let's tease. Let's take away the glue. Without VMware, 
Dell EMC is a very tough company to figure out. So yesterday, I think they did a really great job of taking what was core to Dell and EMC, going together packages, they talked about data protection, taking uh, the 14G platform, throwing some EMC technologies behind that and bringing that together, but, but without VMware, eh, it's a really tough story to sell to C-suites on transformation. It's uh, just a bunch of infrastructure, a bunch of parts that really by themselves don't add value. I think, uh, and if you look at the competitive landscape, that's pr probably why you see the breakup there of their largest competitor because they were, it was really, they didn't have that glue. You mean HPE? HPE, it, it's just, you know, you, you came to the C-suite. They became said, unglued, literally. They became unglued, <laughs> literally. They didn't have anything to, to tell a cohesive story. So I think Dell EMC started out today talking about how the combined companies, the core businesses of storage, compute, networking, packaged that together. This morning was about putting that glue on top and how and you, know, you, you throw on top of that the cloud, uh, the pivotal cloud foundry and the uh, PaaS and cloud and hybrid cloud makes it, uh, I think, a compelling story. I think Dell EMC overall, Dell Technologies, has some work to do in the boardroom at the C-suite level to gain, I think, a deep level of trust that, that they can uh, basically get it done. I think they have the capability, it's about getting it done. Well, we heard it yesterday from David Gould and uh, David Floyd, you weren't here, but we interviewed both and Michael Dell, who didn't really address, because more on the, on the high level uh, messaging, but David Gould didn't address it specifically, and, I, and he said, hey, you know, where the big EMC shops come in, we bring Dell, where there's Dell, we bring in EMC storage, so the synergies, they're seeing some synergies immediately, yeah. just on the wins that they're getting. With the glue of VMware, you're seeing some specific uh, traction there, obviously with multi-cloud. So two questions for you is, where's the challenges, and this, Keith, you, if you can weigh in on this too, it'd be great. What are the challenges for Dell EMC? What's the white space they got to fill in quickly? Where's the challenges, weaknesses, opportunities? Um, and two, can they really pull that story together and go to the customers and be that trusted advisor? So uh, let's talk about the challenge area. Um, Pivotal is doing well where it's, where it's uh, deployed. But as a strategy, if, if, if you look at our research, what we've found is that PaaS is actually mainly in the areas of uh, uh, the SaaS vendors, like ServiceNow, for example, or in vendors like Salesforce. They are the ones that are uh, uh, providing the PaaS platforms. And the other part of PaaS is AWS, for example, the added services, Azure, the added services. So the PaaS marketplace is really fragmented in two, and what's remaining is a really quite a small marketplace for individual customers, and Cloud Foundry is a great product, et cetera, but I don't see that sustaining a huge revenue stream. So, but, but, can, but can it be glue, or not? It, it, it's, 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 it's there. Uh, it's useful, but I, I believe there are other more powerful uh, SaaS platforms. Um, the, the other area which is uh, they need to do more work on is in IoT, in particular because uh, IoT is at the edge, and huge amount of the IoT is on ARM processes. So they need to more strongly embrace ARM processes really understand not just the IT part of it, but the OT part of it. I didn't see much evidence today they really understood what OT was about, operational technology. Keith, I want to get your reaction to um, comment. Um, I heard in the hallways, but I'll put it here. Startups are always a canary in the coal mine, certainly on the bigger whales like the Dell EMCs and the Oracles and the HPEs. You can see the funding climate is usually a, a prediction of a five year window of what's out there. Um, there's not a lot of infrastructure startups. You mentioned hyperconverge. Looks like Dell's winning that, and other big players have some good products there and the integration. It's really hard to crack. So you're seeing a lot of drying up of funding for companies who come in and say, "I'm going to be a storage solution. I'm going to scale out, scale up storage, straight up hardcore storage." However, you're seeing you know cohesity, um, rubrics, data protection is hot area. Like I mean, so like. These little nuanced areas that were once kind of like, I won't say throwaway, but big businesses which were kind of point solutions to the bigger picture, kind of speak to the value of the cloud and IOT. Comments on the funding the startups are getting, 
and what that means to the bigger players from a customer standpoint as they look at the landscape. Should they be evaluating startups? Is it a, is it a, a, a canary in the coal mine in the sense of the tell sign for the trend? So I think Cohesity is just recently announced, what was it, like a $90 million round? So it is something that we pay attention to as a customer perspective. You know, Data Domain is a great example of a solution that pioneered the area. It was extremely trusted. It gets to the point that it's like VMware. It's a tax, VMware vSphere, it's a tax on the infrastructure. Data is growing at insane uh, amounts. If you look at Edge and the amount of data that's being generated in, by old IOT devices and the need to capture that data, back it up, or even move it for analysis offsite to a, uh, some type of data lake, critical, critical piece of it. So, you know, Dell, EMC announced that they're repackaging data domain into an appliance and trying to catch, capture a little of that thunder in, the, uh, in a bottle a, a little bit. But you know what, it's, I don't know if it's a little bit me too, seems yeah. a little bit me too, but I, I think from a customer perspective, it is a uh, extremely well, valuations are always an indicator of the hype cycle, and we're seeing, you know, Cohesion of Rubrics, massive value, which over almost a billion dollars on the last round of funding. But you got Daydream and other companies out there that speak to the unmet needs of the customer. David, you've been in the storage business, you've seen in movies, zillion cycles of innovation, ups and downs. What's real, what's not real, relative to unmet customer needs, vis-a-vis -vis startups and the big guys trying to fill the white space? Well, they, they, they key, one of the key areas that they've really doubled down on now is Flash. So all of the announcements had Flash or Flash arrays. And uh, that is where the growth is at this particular time. But longer term, and, uh, the, the key trends are not just Flash itself, but Flash plus NVMe, and even more important, Flash plus NVMe over Fabric. This is going to provide the ability to connect a thousand systems together, have one pool of data, and really realize the dream of transformation, digital transformation, which is access to any data at any time uh, whatever the application needs. Now that architecture is just coming out, and that architecture is, in my view, is the game changer, which is going to bring all of this together. And Dell has a, a very good shot at being a major player in this area. And your, again, your research is to say wikibon.com if you want to check it out. Great stuff from the whole team over at Wikibon. Uh, some VMware commentary I want to get your reaction to. Obviously, Pat Gelsinger keep doing the keynote speech here. Uh, day two, headlining, he's going to be on theCUBE at one o'clock. Um, but a couple of notable things, the Google partnership with Workspace ONE and Chromebooks, okay, I get that. Uh, IOT management is a big announcement with the Pulse IOT Center, and obviously the AirWatch Dell Client Command Center. Speaks to multiple endpoints relative to these new network architecture you're kind of teasing out there. So the question is, and we heard the VDI is kind of with VX Rails there. So when I heard sort of the VDI thing, I was kind of like, how much is it old checkboxes? Finally, it crosses the finish line. VDI crosses the finish line with some sort of cohe coherency. Question for you guys is, what's old and what's new? What's the new area? So some stuff old's got to be checked off and either uh, yeah, abstracted sure. away, mm -hmm. automated, mm -hmm. but delivered. So mm -hmm. air wash, I get the VDI. And how much is going to be new growth opportunities for VMware? So I'm a big fan of growth at the edge. Data expansion at the edge is a serious problem for customers that they're addressing now. This IoT revolution that we think is coming has already came and gone, it's here, and the need to store data and process that data at the edge is a serious problem. So when you talk about HCI at the edge and then intelligence, whether it's a PaaS and Cloud Foundry or some type of serverless compute to do uh, near line processing of that data on the edge and send that aggregate data to the, your central data, data center is a great, I think, opportunity for VMware, Dell, EMC. That's where I'm seeing the growth potential for VMware, especially in the announcements as a, the past couple of days. I don't know if Pulse will be that gateway that VMware will want it to be, but I think focusing it's directly on that, correct. Yeah, it's directly correct. I mean, they're correct. automating yeah. out, trying to make some simplicity around it. David, I asked Michael Dell a specific question I want to like get your thoughts on. I said, Michael, I get the strategy, mature market, data center, it's mature, it's big numbers, trillions of dollars in IT spend. You want for them to be number one player in that mature market. You can argue the growth may be negative or be single digits, whatever. I get that consolidation strategy. Sure. But where's the growth coming from? You mentioned VMware. Dell EMC, where is the growth area? 
you know, IoT obviously is the work, you're doing a lot of work area on, is that the growth area? What's the growth area? The, the, the growth area is, uh, in, in, in my view, in two areas. SaaS, uh, the growth of SaaS ISVs, uh, that's an area that uh, Dell and EMC need to find a way to provide services directly to those people. Um, either you know, on, on VMware itself or on, on uh, their own hardware. So that's a, really a very big growth area. Private cloud obviously is a growth area. Uh, uh, that's a key growth area. And the other growth area is not the traditional uh, SAN appliances, the, the SAN controllers, but the software-led infrastructure. So it's the vSAN, it's the scale IO, which in my opinion, they are in a good position to pull, push very hard, as long as they don't uh, get, get themselves in the way by sort of putting all the resources into the uh, traditional uh, scale IO, uh, Scale IO, I was talking to the C VP of engineering yes. yesterday. Yeah. He told me, and I don't know if, this, if he told me, he didn't say off the record, but I'll, since I'll say it, 40 terabytes, uh, petabytes, petabytes in production. Yes, yes, this is actually for a VDI application. This is for city, uh, city so financial business. services. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's yes. pretty significant. Yes, that's very significant and, and it's, uh, that is, Though, however, it's VDI, uh, VDI is uh, okay, um, but, but that's, a, that's a very good application of much cheaper technology to solve a problem than traditional uh, way of doing it. And we talk a lot about a hybrid cloud, and you mentioned yeah. the file system, the potential of a vSAN and a scale I.O. Chad Sackett, we had him on theCUBE yesterday, and you know, excitable guy. When they bought Scale.io, he did a demo of Scale.io in AWS, where I think he got something like a million IOPS yeah. in AWS. So while futuristic at the time, it makes sense, consistency across environments. What I have in my private data center is the same thing that I have in Google Compute, which is the same thing that I have in AWS. I understand how to manage it, I understand how to deliver it, I understand how to support it. It makes a bit of So you're deal. basically saying this is an operational efficiency game yes. for them. Yes. They have yes. to really make it easy and not having to hire people yes. to operate the data right. centers or clouds. Is that and it? hybrid cloud has to have this commonality between the okay. cloud and the edge. Okay, final question. Um, what is the multi-cloud reality? Obviously, hybrid cloud, no debate from me. I love it. I think that's very relevant, end-to-end, -end more. Where's the code base, operational um, uh, simplicity across the different platforms? I get that. Multi-cloud, though, it's, got a, it's a fantasy, David. Come on. I mean, multi-cloud, you got latency issues. I mean, is multi-cloud realistic right now, or how far out is that? I mean, <laughs> I mean let's debate uh, this real quick. Latency is... The, to me, the key issue, and why this, these new architectures are all about latency, getting latency down to 50 microseconds, not 50 uh, milliseconds. So it, it's this a level of latency is going to allow a, a fantastic new set of applications, and they're going to be at the edge. Uh, whatever the edge is, uh, it's the IoT edge, it's the consumer edge, it's the, uh, uh, the, the, data, the local data center. And multi-cloud real? And so, multi-cloud though, if you think about SaaS and the number of SaaS clouds that you've exactly. got, you're going to have a lots and lots of those different clouds, and they're going to integrate to other clouds. So, you will have They a are, when? When will they integrate? Well, they have I mean, to no one's really doing multi-cloud today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is. Absolutely, they are or they aren't? They are not yes. doing it. The, the, there is very little migration, except for simple migration between the different clouds. You have to have the same architecture, you have to say, have the same fundamental building blocks to be able to do that. Now, will they all congeal around one particular set of services? Maybe, but is it going to be a multi-cloud environment? Absolutely, there is so much space out there for individual Kevin, solutions. Keith, do you agree? Yeah, I think uh, today, there's a multi-cloud reality in the sense that most customers have multiple IS providers, multiple PaaS, Providers, but when you're talking about coherent, interactive applications that span multiple clouds, yeah. a bit of a dream, kind of like the, the hybrid cloud, on-premises, off-premises, data center cloud, that 
probably one pain to c control them all. We're yeah. far from that. It's fantasy land right now, but directionally correct, I would agree that hybrid cloud is the gateway to multi-cloud. Yes. yes. And certainly uh, for I'm, sure. Multi-cloud just being that I need a lot of different services yeah. in different and places. And that might be application specific. Still yeah. a lot of stuff to be written in that narrative yes. coming. Of course, we'll be covering it on theCUBE with the experts, thought leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs here. We're at Dell EMC World, the scene's buzzing. Uh, I got two cubes, 24 interviews a day for three days, three days of coverage. Okay, breaking it down for you. Day two kickoff with the experts here from theCUBE. More coverage, stay with us with theCUBE coverage here at Dell EMC. We'll be back with more after this short break.